Okay. I had to change the light because the last light was not flattering. And my camera keeps shutting off like right after 12 minutes of recording and it's really pissing me off. So we're gonna go through this again. If you're watching this, hi, I haven't made a video in over a year, but thank you for watching this one. My name's Kate and I'm a senior in college and that's why I have no time to do anything but sleep, eat, and go to class. Um, I'm here to talk to you guys about some books that I like um, because I'm a creative writing major and I like books, but I don't really get to read a lot of books that I wanna read because I have to read so many books for class. So I'm gonna talk about some books that I really liked reading. Anybody that knows me knows that I'm a Y A H E A U X ho, young adult ho. I love young adult novels. I get looked down for liking young adult novels by other creative writing majors and some lit majors. I don't know why, but it doesn't make me like them any less. So I'm here to talk to you guys about some books that I like and that I think you should read if you're interested in young adult literature. They're pretty popular, so you may have already read them. Uh, if you have, kudos, they're really good. Um, so if you want my book recommendations, keep on watching. If you don't, that's fine, I guess. Don't watch. <laughs> my first one is Fangirl by Rainbow Roll. Uh, I actually only have a copy of one of the books that I'm going to talk about because they're all at home and I don't like to transport my books to Stillwater for school because they're heavy and I have other things that I need to pack so they're all on my bookshelf at home but I have uh, a copy of one of the books I'm going to talk about unfortunately it's not Fangirl but Fangirl by Rainbow Roll who writes adult literature as well as young adult is my favorite I liked Eleanor in Park which is usually the novel that people choose to read as their first Rainbow Roll novel but I like Fangirl better so that's why that's on this list instead of Eleanor in Park um, but Fangirl is fantastic. Uh, it's about Kath and her sister, who I believe is named Ren, Kath and Ren, because it's Renegade. That's her fanfiction author name. They go to college in Nebraska. There's mentions of Quick Trip, which just warms my little Oklahoma heart. And there's Levi, which is Kath's love interest, but the book is more centered on self-discovery than the romance, which is nice. I usually do read young adult romance, but I liked that this had romantic aspects that was not focused on the romance. That was nice. Um, and Rainbow Roll actually wrote a spinoff of the series that Kath writes fanfiction on, and it's called Carry On, and it's really good too. So definitely pick up Fangirl. If you want to read Eleanor and Park as your first one, that's fine. A lot of people recommend that. I really liked Eleanor and Park. It's also so good. I just like Fangirl better. Moving on. Uh, my next one is Anna and the French Kiss by Stephanie Perkins. I love Anna and the French Kiss uh, and all subsequent novels in the series that come after. Um, I just love Anna and the French Kiss the best and that's because of one word. And that one word is Etienne. And when Kathleen Lights announced that her periwinkle nail polish color was called St. Clair after Etienne, I was like, because I needed to love you more, Kathleen. Because I needed to love you more. It's just such a good young adult romance. I love it so much. Isla and Lola are also really good and they're all in the same universe, which is fun because uh, you can connect everything together. But definitely read that. Stephanie Perkins, she's an amazing author. She's just really fun to read. A uh, nice, uh, fluffy, kind of lax read for books. Yes. So my third novel is This Is What Happy Looks Like by Jennifer E. Smith. I'm so bad at remembering the first first name, middle initial, last names. Jennifer E. Smith, because I filmed this video three times. I'm not forgetting it. <laughs> she also wrote, um, this name is so hard for me to say, The Statistical Probability of Love at First Sight, which is the first novel I ever saw by her. I don't think I've read that one, but I've heard it's really good. It's a little bit shorter then this is what happy looks like, but this is what happy looks like is like a nice little summer romance kind of novel. Um, it's really sweet. It's the yellow cover. Her novels all have like one central color and then the rest is uh, monochromatic. So this is yellow and it has a little novella spinoff and it's really cute. I really want everybody to read it because it just made me so happy and I sat in a booth at IHOP for a couple hours with a short stack of pancakes and a hot chocolate and just read this book and it was so nice and I recommend everybody do that. Tip your waitress really well if you take up her table for that long though because it's, it's 
a courtesy. Don't don't be rude. <laughs> um, but it's so good and it's really sweet and it's just a nice easy read, which I think everybody needs now and then. So definitely give that one a, um, a look. It's good. So the next one is the one that I have the physical copy of and I read it for my non-Western traditions um, class. And it is The Grass Dancer by Susan Power. And it is about the Sioux Native Americans. Um, it's really good, especially I think it's important that everybody in the United States um, know about Native American culture and all the different aspects, all the different tribes. Um, it's not all the same Native American culture. It's different tribe to tribe, and this one is specifically about the Sioux. Um, I think it's, it's important to know because they were here first. Like, don't be a jackass. Just know. It, just respect the culture. It's like, that's not hard to do. <laughs> and um, this is just like a nice little look into one of many Native American cultures, and I think that's important. And mine's like highlighted and beautiful, and I stopped highlighting like halfway through because I couldn't stop reading, and I can't stop to highlight when the book is that good. So, um, definitely look, look, look at this, especially if you live in the United States. I think it's important if you don't, but especially important if you do. So yeah, Grass Dancer, Susan Power. So good. So good. And my last one is more of an author, um, because I love all of her books, and I recommend all of them. Somebody's outside. Who's that? I don't know who that is. Hello? My last one is an author rather than a book because I love all of her work, but it's Danielle Vega slash Rollins. Um, she does have different names on different books. She mostly keeps Vega for The Merciless because it's a series and I don't think she wants to confuse people by putting Rollins on it because they might think it's not the same thing. Um, but I think she got married and that's why her name changed and she's got Rollins on some novels and Vega on The Merciless. And I think Vega is also on Survive the Night because I think it came out before her last name change. I don't know, I have that, I lent that one out too. But um, she's young adult horror and it's so good. It's like visceral and grisly and like so good. And I think for The Merciless, uh, Marlene King is actually looking at turning it into a movie or a TV show. She's the executive producer of Pretty Little Liars, if you didn't know, which is so exciting. And the best part is that Danielle often interacts with me on Twitter when I tweet her my praises and that just makes me feel so special and she's so nice and I follow her on Facebook and Twitter and oh she's so good. Uh, I don't recommend her if you don't like gore. I mean like really grisly visual horror. I don't like to watch horror movies so if you don't like to, you might like her if you still like the horror aspect. Um, I do like the horror aspect, but I don't like to see it, but I like to read it. So um, she's really good for that. And there's not a lot of young adult horror novelists, and I think she does a really good job. So pick her up. Um, the Merciless was her debut, and it was fantastic. I read it in a day, and God, it's so good. I read the second one in a day in the car on the way to Colorado. And I'm waiting for the third one. I have Burning on my Kindle. I'm really excited to read that once I have time. But she's great. Definitely look at her if you like horror and young adult. Even if you don't like horror or you think you might be interested in horror, I would definitely turn to Danielle Vega because she's a good introduction. Yeah. So yeah, that's really it. I tried to rush through this video. I'm sorry if I'm kind of talking like uh, Lorelai Gilmore. But my camera keeps shutting off at about 12 minutes and 5 seconds and I don't really want that to happen again. And I think I might have gotten the focusing right and I don't want to mess that up. So thank you so much for coming back to my YouTube channel. I know that I'm really, really shaky or sporadic, sporadic about uploading. I'm going to try to be better about that, but I don't think I'm that interesting, which is why I'm talking about books right now. So um, if you guys have any suggestions for what you want to see, leave them below. Leave them on my Instagram, which is Tiny Moon Princess. My Twitter is Tiny Moon Princes. It was supposed to be Princess, but I didn't realize that that was too many characters. <laughs> so it's Princes, Tiny Moon Princes. And my Tumblr is the same thing, but like I don't really know if you guys want to leave YouTube video suggestions on my Tumblr. If you do, like go for it. <laughs> um, but thank you so much for watching. Uh, I hope you guys check out some of these books because they're really good. Um, 